بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are starting with a new unit الوحدة الثالثة the third chapter or third unit okay الوحدة you can translate as a unit or you can translate as chapter okay so the third unit or the third chapter um, now so we're starting with الدرسو الثالثة عشرة the 13th uh, lesson okay جيد so the title of the lesson is بيتو بكرين okay بيتو بكرين and we have to recognize this thing we have spent some time talking about this kind of phrase right so we have بيتو بكرين this is called إضافة construction right where the first one doesn't take تنوين so instead of saying بيتون we say بيتو and the second word takes كسرة Okay, so this is that of construction. So we say the house of Bakr. Yes, the house of Bakr. Now, so it says Hada Baitu Bakrin. This is Hada is this. This is the house of Bakr. This is the house of Bakr. So the first sentence we have Rakmul Bayti Thalathatun. Rakmul Bayti Thalathatun. Same construction, same idafa. Okay. Rakmu al Bayti. Now, so Rakm means what? Rakm means number. Okay. And this one you can translate as of number of the house. Right. Al Bayti's house. What? Thalatha. Thalatha is three. Inshallah, I think in this lesson we'll be learning about numbers. Okay, so Thalathatun is three. Now, so you can translate this one as the number of the house is what is three. Okay, the number of the house is three. And the next one, Al Baytu fi Share il Masjid al Haram. Okay, Al Baytu fi Share il Masjid al Haram. So, what is Al Baytu? Al Baytu is the house fi in Share. Share is street. Okay, fi Share al Masjid al Haram. So uh, you have to kind of recognize something is going on here. So because first of all, because you have uh, you have fee, so this one needs to be in kasr, all right? But then you also have to recognize we have some kind of same idafa construction, same construction of, because the first one, you see, remember, if the first one is, looks like an indefinite, and the second word has the alif lam, okay? See, the first one doesn't have alif lam, and the second one has alif lam. This is an indication that this word is idafa construction, the of. So this part would be the street of the masjid. Okay, but then we have another uh, uh, another word here is al haram. Al haram is uh, is is basically can translate as sacred. Uh, uh, sacred. Sacred. Okay, I, I believe that's how it's spelled. So it's basically talking about this thing. You can uh, see it in an adjective, the sacred masjid. Okay, so you can say sacred mosque. Right, the sacred mosque. And now we have another phrase here. You see, it's kind of like, uh, you know, combining a lot of ideas here. The first idea is what? That this is an adjective phrase, okay? Meaning you're not saying the masjid is sacred because all of them are, you know, uh, the alif lam is here, alif lam is here. Remember, we are matching everything, so it's not a sentence. For sentence, usually you need the definite and then you need to have indefinite, okay? So when you have both of them def definite, most of the time, when both of the nouns are definite, majority of the time there's exception, but majority of the time it will be an adjective phrase, okay? So we have al-masjid, al-haram, and you can verify whether or not it's adjective. Uh, we haven't learned too much detail about adjective yet, but here it's, uh, it's an adjective, right? So al-masjid al-haram means the sacred mosque, the sacred mosque, okay? Now, you're not done because it looks like this part 
is part of another construction, which is our idafa. Because now this whole thing is definite, and this first thing doesn't have alif lam. So it looks like this is off. So yeah, it kind of looks complicated, but you know, I'm just, if you don't understand what I'm saying, but inshallah, you know, things will be a lot more easier as we uh, move forward, inshallah. But uh, just I'm telling you the first part is, uh, this part here is your adjective. And the next part here is idafa. So you're saying the street of, you can translate the street of the, uh, the sacred mosque. You see? Because if this one, if we didn't have al-haram, then we would say what? Street of the mosque. Okay? So because we have an adjective, we say the street of the sacred mosque. Okay? Make sense? No. So how do you translate the whole thing now? Again, we have fi, fi is harful jar. After harful jar, you need to put a kasra. Okay? After harful jar, you need to put kasra. Now the question is, do you put uh, one kasra or two kasras, right? Do you put shari'in, okay? Because the word is shari', shari'un, which is a street, and you put fi, so you should be shari'in, right? Right? But because this is part of idafa, remember the rule, you cannot put tanwin, you have to put only one. Okay, so all of these rules, you have to kind of feel comfortable and even if you are not, you know, with all of these rules, you kind of have to uh, combine them uh, to get the whole meaning, okay? So now you will translate the house is in the street of the sacred mosque. Make sense? Inshallah, don't worry too much. We'll talk a lot more about this adjective phrase, the idafa construction, uh, inshallah, in the future. Jayid. And the next word, is, and the next sentence is al baytu kabirun. And this is very fairly simple sentence. And see, we have the definite. The first word is definite, al baytu, and the second word is indefinite. And that's the standard, where you have the subject, which is al bay, and kabir is predicate. Okay. The standard rule in Arabic language is that the subject should be definite, which is the case here, and the predicate should be indefinite. And that's how you construct uh, a, a sentence. Al baytu kabirun, the house is big. Now, uh, so the next page we have amam al bayti. Amama is front of. We had this one. Amam al bayti. Again, we have kasra because of this. Uh, this amama. Hadiqatun wasiatun. Okay. Hadiqatun wasi. What is hadika? Hadika is garden now is it uh, indefinite or definite we have clearly we have a tanwin so this is an indefinite noun it's not a definite noun so what is wasi'a wasi'a is wide wide like you know big right now this is also indefinite now just by looking at these two words you need to ask yourself you have to figure out what's going on what is the relationship between this word and the that word okay especially when you have two nouns side by side, you need to be able to understand what is the relationship, what kind of construction uh, of these phrases, right? Is it an idafa, is it a sentence, or is it an adjective? Okay, you have to find uh, one of these three. So in the beginning, the easiest way to figure things out is by looking at <clears throat> their uh, definiteness. Okay, so if the if both of them are indefinite or both of them are definite this is a clear indication that it might be an adjective okay so it looks like here is the case we have indefinite and we also have indefinite so chances are this will be an adjective another thing you have to know about adjective is what when the gender is matching an adjective gender must match so what what do i mean by that is that the word hadika is a feminine word. How do I know hadika is feminine? What does it even mean that hadika, the garden is being feminine? Simply it means that it has a tamar buta. So we consider as feminine word. So when you're describing a feminine word or feminine person, then you have to use a feminine adjective. 
I mean, what does it mean, a feminine adjective? Well, it doesn't mean much. It just means that you have to put a ta marbuta to the adjective. So it means basically you had the adjective wa se'un, okay? Wa se'un, which is wide. That was the original word, wa se'r, wa se'r. It's wide, you know? But because you're describing hadiqa, okay, and which is a feminine, you have to add ta marbuta and make it into feminine adjective. And that's precisely what's here, what we have here. Wasi'atun. Okay? So now we looks like it's not only matching with the definiteness, both of them are indefinite, it's also matching what? Gender. So this is a feminine and this word is also feminine. Here's another thing that adjective has to match, which is what? Their ending. The case, the ending, which is the grammar, has to match. Which means, what is the ending? The ending of a word is, you look at the last, you look at the last letter and you look at what is the haraka. Okay, what do we have? Do you have a fata, kasra, or dhamma? Here we have dhamma, double dhamma, and here we also have double dhamma. So that is, it's also matching. So we can say the uh, grammar is also matching. Okay. For example, if it was a... Um, adjective and the hadiqa had fatha well your wasi'a has to be in fatha also okay so inshallah uh, maybe we will go a little bit more details and explain all of these things uh, okay as we uh, move forward Jayid. so now that we know that this is an adjective so hadiqatun wasi'atun it means what a a what a, a wide garden now we can translate a white garden, okay? Right? So you can say, uh, uh, you can say there is a white garden front of the house, or you can say front, front of the house, there is a white garden. That translation, I'll leave it up to you, but that's what the se sentence is telling you, right? Now, the next word we have, وَحَوْلَ الْحَدِيقَةِ سُورٌ مُرْتَفِعٌ Okay, wa hawla al hadiqati surun murtafiun. Wa is of course and hawla hawla is around. Hawla is another uh, you can think of a uh, preposition. It's around. Around. Okay. So whenever you think of preposition, what are you thinking? We we'll keep on uh, repeating this thing. After preposition, you always get a kasra. And indeed, we have a kasra here. Okay, so hawla al hadiqati, it's the same thing as amama. You know, amama is front of, hawla is around, tahta is under, wara'a is behind. You know, all of these, uh, you know, positions that we have or any preposition that we have, we have to put kasra on the words that comes after it. Yes? Now, so hawla al hadiqati around the garden, what? Surun murutafi'un. What is sur? Sur is fence. Fange, like that, fange, like wall. Wall, not in a sense that you have, uh, you know, wall for the house, right? Not not like that. So it's basically fange. Fange, I hope the spelling's right. Fange, murtafe'. Murtafe is high. High, okay? So it's talking about, so again, what do you think about these two words? You have two nouns side by side. You need to analyze it. You need to understand what is... Uh, what is the relationship okay what kind of phrase is this one okay so it looks like the first one uh okay so it looks like they are both indefinite so that's matching and both of them has same grammar case ending it's matching and bo both of them are masculine okay there's no time over that so it looks like it's an adjective so you say hi say a eh, hi uh pench make sense so now you can translate and around the garden what a high fence so of course you gotta put uh, when you translate english you gotta put a lot of uh, more additional word in order to make make it sense like around the garden you can say there is a high fence now yes 
Okay, so next one is Baitu Bakrin. We had this one before, Baitu Bakrin. Qaribun, Qarib is near, near Minal Masjid. Min is from, okay? The word is Min, okay? The word is Min, and uh, which is which means from, and Masjid is Masjid, and because this is an, again, uh, you know, it's a preposition, that's why we have a Kasra. Jade, so why do we have Mina? I think I mentioned it before, because after Min, we have Alif Lam, then the Sukun, you have to change the Sukun, okay? You have to change the Sukun into, uh, uh, depends, some word will take a Kasra, some word will take a Dhamma, some word will take Fatha. So what is it saying? Uh, the house of Bakr is what? Qarib. Qarib is near, near the mosque. Now I need to point out something. Whenever you have the word Qarib, it will always, most of the time, like 99% of the time, it will come with the Min. Qarib Min. It's always Qarib Qarib plus min. So you you it, this uh, qarib plus min gives you a sense of close to. You know near yeah. So because for example, if I was to say close, then I have to say two. So it's close to close to the mosque. Okay, and then its opposite is baid an. Baid. Baid an. Far from. Okay, so when you have baid you will have the preposition an. When you have a qarib, you will have the preposition min. Okay, this is almost all the time you will find them coming uh, as a pair like that, okay? And speaking of it, it's right here, right? So we have wa ba'idun an asuk. Okay, so right, because we have ba'id, that's why we have an. So it is far from, and uh, again, the word was an because we have alif lam, so we have to do something. As you can see right now, different uh, preposition takes a different uh, uh, haraka. The mean takes fatha min al masjid and an takes kasra an is suk. Okay, it's something that inshallah you'll uh, understand. So the issue is because we have two sukun and Arabic language doesn't allow that, so we have to put. Uh, it's usually for making a good pronunciation, a fluid pronunciation. Okay, so uh, again we have a, a kasra here because of the preposition. So we will translate and far from the market yes far from the market now Jade. okay so we have al kalimatul jadida al kalimatul jadida is the new words so what are the new words baitun well that's probably not a new word we had this one before okay and we have this atun hmm. this atun is nine so it looks like we're getting uh, numbers here. This atun, this atun is nine. Okay. Arba'atun. Arba'a is what? Four. Okay. Qaribun, which is what? Uh, near. Okay. And we said qaribun, uh, after qaribun, you usually get min. Qaribun, min. Al-haram. Al-haram is a uh, sacred. Sacred. And then Amama, we had this one before, front of Saba'a. Saba'atun is what? Seven. Saba'atun is seven. Ithnani. Ithnani is two. Okay. Hawla. Hawla is around. Shari'un. Shari is uh, what? What is Shari? Shari is three. No. Ashratun. Ashratun is 10. And Kham Satun is 5. Right? Then we have Ba'idun. Oh, sorry. Ba'idun is far. And what, what did we say? What comes after Ba'id? Ba'id, you get An. Far from. Okay? Ba'id, An. And Surun. Surun is French. Okay, Al Masjid. We know what Al Masjid is. Thamaniya, Thama, Thamani Niyatun is eight. Thamaniyatun is eight. <coughs> okay, and Thalathatun, 
Sana Satun is three. And An, we just had An. An has, you know, the preposition is very difficult to translate by itself because preposition meaning changes depends on what noun we have or what verbs we have. So An can be from, it can be about, you know, it depends. So I don't know how to translate, you know, you need a context, right? Because when you say Ba'id An, then it means, you know, far from. But then when you're saying, I'm talking about something, you, you then you can say, an, uh, an Muhammad. Atakallam an Muhammad. I'm talking about Muhammad. See, so that, uh, you know, just like in even, um, even in English, the preposition meaning changes based on the context. Now, murtafi'un is high. Murtafi'un is high. Okay. Sif, sifrun is zero. Sifrun is zero, and sittatun is six, and wahidun is what one, and wasi'atun. Again, I I would rather learn as wasi'un, wasi'un, which is wide, and we will learn how to make any any adjective into feminine. Okay, for example, the murtafir. It is what murtafa is high. So if you are describing something which is um, feminine, then you can easily take murtafa, uh, murtafaun, and you add tamarbuta. You can easily make it murtafaatun, murtafaatun. Okay. So the main word is murtafaun. Likewise, main word is wasi'un, not wasi'atun. The tamarbuta only came because of the other reason, right? Understand? Now, and then we have uh, here, uh, it's showing you wa in the beginning of the word, wajhun, we had this one before, which is face. Uh, then wisadatun, wisadatun, remember, what is wisadatun? Is pillow, right? And wusul, wusul is arrival. Right, and uh, we have uh, some words with uh, sheen. So shajara is shajara is tree. Mistara is what ruler. And we have rish rish is what feather. Okay, now. Okay, so inshallah we will end here, and inshallah in the next um, part we will go through the exercise. Okay. I will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.